Yet another LaSalle team is being recognized for their academic success this year, and we welcome a new host to the Sportsline desk. Hello, I'm Tegan Lamont. And I'm Tyler Small. Did men's basketball win a game at home? We've got the answers for you coming up. You're watching LaSalle TV, home of the Explorers Athletics Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. Tracks Darian Alston had a great week in his first appearance as an explorer. Isaiah Clark got to sit down with him and get his perspective on his new start here at LaSalle. And later, producer Dana Pictora sat down with freshman basketball player Jack Clark to talk about his transition into colli collegiate basketball in a double edition of On the Sidelines. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline top three. Number one, in his LaSalle debut, the aforementioned transfer student, Darian Alston, broke a school record in the triple jump at Penn State National Open. The junior leapt 15.2 meters, which shattered the record previously held by Edward Morris in 1998. The mark is also the highest in the conference this season. Alston, Alston's performance won him the event and earned him the honor of A-10 Field Performer of the Week. Alston is from Downingtown, Pennsylvania, and went to Penn State for two years before transferring to LaSalle. We will hear more from Darian himself later in the show as we, he sits down with Isaiah Clark. Number two, freshman swimmer Zachary Wolbert was selected as A-10 Men's Performer of the Week. He earned the award after several individual wins as the Explorers went undefeated last week. On January 21st, he won the 100 fly, 200 fly, and 200 individual medley against Loyola, Maryland while also being a part of the 200 medley relay that won gold. Then on the 26th against Mount St. Mary's, he won the 100 fly and 200 individual medley before once again joining the relay team that won gold. Number three, the women's swimming and diving team was elected to the All Scholar, the Scholar All-American team for the fall 2018 semester. This honor is chosen by the College Swimming and Diving Coaches Association of America and is given to a team who has maintained a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher throughout a, a roster of a minimum of 12 athletes. The Explorers maintained an average GPA of 3.23 for the fall 2018 semester. That's all for this week's top three. Let's take a look at how our teams fared this week. Men's basketball earned their fifth victory of the season against UMass at home on January 30th. The Explorers got off to an early lead and led 36 to 28 at the half. David Beattie came off the bench and netted nine of LaSalle's 36 halftime points. The Minutemen cut it close in the second half but were unable to mount a comeback. The Explorers took home the win by a final score of 60 to 51. Saul Peary saw 32 minutes of action and led the Explorers in scoring with 14 points while Isaiah Dees had 12. Freshman Ed Croswell was a force for the Explorers, tallying 11 total rebounds Five, of the, five on the offensive end to go along with his nine points and five blocks. Standout freshman Jack Clark has missed the last few games due to injury, but Sportsline's Dana Pecora got to sit down with the young guard and discuss his return to the court. Take a look. Hello and welcome to another edition of On the Sidelines. I'm Dana Pecora and I'm sitting here with freshman men's basketball player Jack Clark. Hi Jack, thank you for joining us. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, you are, have recovered from an ACL injury. Um, so it brought you into um, a couple games in the season you missed. So your first game back was against Villanova. Mm -hmm. So how did it feel, first of all, just to have your first collegiate basketball game be against the defending champs on such a big stage in front of such a big crowd? Honestly, going out there, I was a bit nervous especially playing in front of a big crowd and at the palestra. But as the game was going on, I kind of adjusted and just played my game and just really just loved being out there with my guys and just playing. Yeah, I mean, you did awesome. You definitely stood out. Um, we definitely saw that you were going to be a big impact on the court. 
Um, so speaking of that, I'm going to go into your Bucknell game. You scored 21 points, mm-hmm. um, had a great game. How does it feel to be a freshman, one of the youngest people on the court, and make such an impact on the team? Well, it's, it's an amazing feeling to know that, that I can just come straight out of high school and just come to the college level and just perform like that. But it also, it also feels good to help my team not only win a couple games, but also have a good bond with each other on the court and off the court. Mm-hmm. So you're coming off of um, a couple wins, um, streaks. You won um, the tournament in Atlantic City. Um, how, was that, how was that such a bonding experience for your team, and how did that really help you guys with your momentum? It was really good because in the hotel after the game and on the bus coming back from AC, we were all hyped, playing music, and just enjoying each other's company the whole ride in the hotel. So, and that really helped us win our next game at uh, UMass. So yeah. it was a really good like turntable in our season. Another huge game. UMass was another huge win. Um, so that definitely has helped your momentum. I know last night we had um, a game that kind of slipped, which has kind of been a little bit of the theme, but we have seen you guys produce so many I mean, a couple great wins. So that's really exciting, and I'm sure it's really exciting to you. Mm -hmm. Um, So how has the transition into college basketball just been in general? At first, it was a little rough because at the speed of the game, it's a lot faster, and the guys are a lot stronger at this level. But I adjusted to it really quick, and the strength guy helped me get a little stronger, and Coach Ash really helped me mentally get prepared for that too. So as I mentioned before, you're coming off an ACL injury. Can you Mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about um, the injury in high school and how it's impacted or affected your game now? Well, actually in high school, in high school I was like a little bit, a bit of a dunker I'd say, but now I'm not really that much of an explosive player as I was in high school, but I'm getting there. I'm not 100% quite yet, but it's getting there. Mm -hmm. Um, And you mentioned that Coach Howard is helping you, um, has helped you. How has he really impacted your game, and how has he helped the team kind of? Because, you know, he's new, Mm -hmm. you're new. How's it all been? He really helped me coming. First of all, Coach Ash recruited me at Nova, and me and him both had a prior relationship before him getting the head coach job at LaSalle. So he knew my game, I knew him, and we were just – we kind of just had a relationship, so he helped me with my offense and my defensive skills. And he really brought this team together because we all came from different playing styles. And he's just trying to bring like the Villanova atmosphere over to LaSalle, and mm-hmm. it's really helping us right now. Awesome. Um, and as one of the younger players on the court, how have the older players um, kind of been helping you with your transition? How are the leadership on the team? Yeah, they're really helping me. At the little stuff that I don't understand, the concepts or some plays or the mistakes I make on the court, they always make it a point to come to me at timeouts or in the locker room and say, oh, Jack, you need to do this. You need to work on this. So it really helps me in the long run. Awesome. Um, and kind of transitioning a little bit from basketball, how has just been your first year at LaSalle going in general? How do you like the school? Oh, it's good. I, I really like it. You like it? It's a small campus, but I really like it, though. I get to know all my professors, mm-hmm. all, the, all the people. I get to see, like, the same people every day, so I get a relationship with everybody. So... It's really nice. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We are so happy to have you, and we wish you the best of luck with the rest of your season and your, the thank rest you. of your recovery. Thank you. And that is it. Again, we sat down with Jack Clark of the men's basketball team. So that's it for another edition of On the Sidelines. Back to the desk. All right. Thanks, Dana, and thanks, Jack. Um, I think it's super impressive the way that Jack started his career here at LaSalle. Um, his, his debut, which they talked about a little bit, was against Villanova. He put up nine there. He was three of four shooting, all from three. Um, the kid can really score the ball. I think he's a really impressive talent offensively, um, and I can't wait to see how he grows as a player. Yeah, exactly. I mean, where you see where collegiate basketball is leaning is from shooting outside the arc. You always need shooters, and going three from four from the outside, if he's on, he's going to have a big scoring game and lead the team in scoring for sure. Right. I mean, that was a, that was a piece that we were missing. He, he tore his ACL in high school his senior year, right. and... I mean, honestly, came back faster than I think most people expected him to this season. But um, having him, what we missed early in the season was a guy that could knock down an outside shot. Mm. We had a nice presence inside with a couple other freshmen and Ed Croswell and Jared Kimbrough. Mm -hmm. But the outside game was where we were lacking quite a bit. 
um, when Jack came in and started knocking down those three pointers, we could really we really saw some development in this team. And now you see that's where the team is going with this three point shooting. Right. And it's something that we'll see even for the future. Right. The women's basketball team played Richmond at home on Saturday, January 26th. Isaiah Clark has your recap. Saturday, LaSalle women's basketball took on the Richmond Spiders in A-10 play. Senior Jaron Reese got the scoring started with a three-pointer to open the game. The Explorers then spent the rest of the quarter battling for the lead with the Spiders, while also taking advantage of good defense, scoring seven points off turnovers. Despite that, Richmond ended the hard-fought first quarter up by two with a score of 17-15. As the second quarter commenced, the Blue and Gold scored with a jumper from sophomore Rachel Brown to tie it. The Spiders would try to pull away from the Explorers throughout the quarter, but LaSalle continued to belt back. With a minute left, Jaron Reese hit a three-pointer to put LaSalle up one, before Richmond answered back to put the score to 37-35 at the half. Things started to go bad for the Explorers in the third, as Richmond, led by a scoring onslaught by Deja Ruffin, began to take over the game. The Spiders would punctuate their lead with a buzzer beater to end the quarter with a score of 61-45. It was much of the same in the fourth, with Richmond holding a commanding lead, never letting the Explorers within 10. The game ultimately ended with a score of 74-60. Jaron Reese ended up with 8 rebounds as Shayla Sweeney scored a team-high 11 points. The loss brings the South's record to 0-7 in conference and 3-18 overall. For Sportsline, I'm Isaiah Clark. Thanks, Isaiah. Um, the women's team is a big struggle right now. I mean, they continuously pick games up and then drop them. At, drop mm -hmm. them. I mean, they played a great first half of basketball in that game, um, something that they haven't been able to say very much this year. But maybe there's a little bit of growth there. At least they're showing some, some pride and some fight to start a game. Um, They've lost a lot of big, big games. Lost them big. Yeah, and you've seen that explosive start at the beginning, but then it just comes down to coaching decisions at the end and just having that experience on the court. Right, absolutely. All right, we're moving on to men's track. The men's track team competed at the Penn State National Open. Luke Jaku Zarakowski outran 16 other participants and took first place in the 3,000 meter competition. The sophomore completed the event in a little under eight minutes and 30 seconds for a first place finish. Freshman Chris Lewis finished just off the podium uh, in the 200 meter with a time just under 22 seconds. Meanwhile, sophomore Dennis Mania competed in the high jump and finished in fourth as well with a jump just over two meters. But the real story to come out of the Penn State Open was Darian Alston. The junior is a Penn State transfer who recorded a program best at his, at his former school in his first meet in the blue and gold. Isaiah Clark sat down with Darian and has more. Clark, and I'm sitting here with Darian Alston, track star. Hey, what's how you going doing? On, man? Good, how are you? All right, so let's start with the big question. Uh, you went to Penn State recently for your first meet with LaSalle, and you broke a record, 21-year-old record. How does that feel? It's pretty amazing, man. I mean, going back to, uh, you know, my old school where I was struggling a lot with, like, school and track and field, obviously, so I had to, you know, make the move and come here. But it was honestly just, you know, a memory for the, you know, the ages and everything, so. I mean, I was pretty happy. It was kind of ironic to go back there for like my <laughs> first meet because my couple meets got canceled. So I had to, you know, put down a mark somewhere. So I have to be, you know, at Penn State. So it's pretty awesome. Right. And so, like you said, you transferred from Penn State mm -hmm. to come here. And mm -hmm. how's your transition here to Penn so far? Like, it's been were, awesome. It's been awesome. Nice. I love Philadelphia. You know, I'm like from Westchester. So like he's been right in my backyard. So, you know, it's a pretty, uh, pretty easy move, you know, to transfer here. So, yeah. okay. And what, and academically, what are you doing? Like, what's your major? I'm a comm major and I'm minor in uh, education, actually. Education. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. So I like to do a little research on the, the athletes that we interview. And I went back and I saw, you know, you did pretty well in high school. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, a few, a few championships, a few accolades. Um, what's your biggest accomplishment, do you think, so far? In high school, you mean? In high school. In high school. In, in any point. Uh, it's like tough between the one that happened this weekend and high school. <laughs> I'm going to go with high school, man, because I was coming off a bad hamstring injury like a couple weeks before. And um, ironically, I won the state championship at Penn State again, so, you know, I kind of was kind of, um, you know, doubted, you know, kind of overwhelmed with everything because I had a hamstring pull and everything, you know, everybody had a, like a target on my back and everything, so I was kind of, you know, doubting that sense, but, you know, I kind of pulled through, you know, won the state championship and, you know, so I got my name on the map pretty much, you know, 
So. All right. So Penn State, a good luck charm. I, you but. can say that. You can <laughs> yeah. say that. You know, it can go both ways. But All right. so, you do so well in you know your your area, your event. When did you exactly start doing track? Because you know this isn't like a high school. I just go. I'm going to test it out, and I'll just happen to be good at it. Yeah, you can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Well, I started around um, like eighth grade, just like running. I wasn't even jumping. Yet. I was just you know sprinting, doing like the hundred, two hundred yeah. and stuff. And um, it was about my freshman year of spring. My coach saw I had like a lot of speed and long jump, and he was like, "You might as well try the triple jump." So I didn't have a coach for like three years until uh, college. So you know, I was watching like YouTube videos, you know, trying to see other jumpers during competition, see what they do, what techniques they have. So it was, it was a pretty, you know, pretty hard road to kind of coach myself, but. You know, it worked out for the better, obviously, so. Okay, yeah, um, I would say you did pretty good for yeah. yourself. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh -huh. you know, a few of our producers don't really know exactly what you do in your event. How exactly, can you, like, explain what the triple jump is? So, like, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what a long jump is. I'm hoping yeah. they know what a long <laughs> jump is. So, like, it's like that, but it has three jumps within, like, you know, a jump, pretty much. So, like, you start from, like, a board. Let's say it's, like, a 40-foot board. So, you run down. You jump off that board and you have to jump off that same leg again. And then once you jump off the same leg again, you gotta jump off the other leg once and then into the pit. So it's like a like it's it's triple jump, it's three jumps, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's pretty self uh, explanatory. See, but. we were gonna get you to like like should demonstrate for us, but I think we were like you would jump out of our camera zone. So I like, I know. definitely run past the camera. It wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't be wouldn't be much helpful. So <laughs> I mean uh, it's all, right, all good. So, for the future, like, do you think you can improve even more on your first meet? No, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I had so much more in the tank. I actually uh, twisted my ankle before I uh, oh. went out there, so I was kind of, you know, skeptical about how, how am I going to jump? Like, I don't think I can do this. You know, I manned up and everything, and, you know, I got the job done. So I can definitely go farther. I got a lot more in the tank. Okay. So. And, you know, uh, with your team, like, do you, you get along with your team? Like, do you have, like, a mentor, like an older uh, track guy that, like, you know, mentors you a little bit? or? Well, I love my team, to be honest, you know, shout out to those guys. They brought me in, they treat me like family right away, so it's pretty awesome. And, um, you know, the person I really look up to is my coach, um, Erica Ferguson. Um, she brought me in with open arms, you know, and um, took a chance on me because I was struggling up at Penn State. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I owe that record to her, to be honest, because, you know, she brought me in and showed me everything she knew and, you know, respected my body and how my body, you know, works and everything. Because at Penn State, I was kind of, you know, just struggling with uh, how the program worked and how I was getting patterns to the ground with like, you know, this way, and you see that this way or the highway, you know, so she understood me, she about my mindset, my body, and you know, here we are, so All right, it worked so out. So your transition like, made you more relaxed, more yes, like yes, able yes. to do what you're, you're good at really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, so looking ahead, you know, for like A-10 stuff, do you see any uh, like tough competition in like the conference or, you know, are you just, um, you, get, you go to Penn State and you know, a10 isn't much of a difficult challenge anymore. I say, I mean, I say it's about the same. I mean, everybody's gonna be, you know, eyeing me down, have a target on my back, you know, because there's one kid from VCU that jumps like 48, 11, so he's not that far behind me, so I gotta watch out for him. But um, you know, as long as I stick to the course, you know, what I'm saying just practice, train, you know, focus on school, of course, yeah. and um, you know, see where he takes me. So all right. I should be in good spot. So that's all the questions I have for you. Uh, thanks for joining me. No problem. Thanks uh, for having me. No problem. <laughs> All right, this is Darian Alston. He's pretty good at what he does. I'm Isaiah Clark. I'm pretty good at what I do. And this has been On the Sideline. Go block your best. Women's track also competed at the Penn State National Open over the weekend. Star runner Grace Mancini ran a personal best in the 3,000 meter and finished in third place with a time of 9 minutes, 34 seconds. Teammate Ariel Mitchell reset her school record in the 60 meter dash with a time of 7.62 seconds. She finished in 11th place in a field of 40 sprinters. Senior Kalia Miller and junior Jessica Bryant both competed in the long jump and triple jump. Miller leaped 5.5 meters and finished 10th out of 26 in the long jump, while Bryant finished 12th with a mark of 5.4 meters. In the triple jump, Bryant finished with a mark just over 11 meters and Miller jumped 10.7 meters. Men's swimming continued their dominant month of January with a road win against Mount St. Mary's. In their fourth win in a row, the Explorers dominated the meet from, from the start, earning a first place swimmer or diver in each of the first 14 events. The men won nine individual events, including freshman Zachary Wolbert and senior Alexander Nikolic, who won two events each. On top of Nikolic's wins, the men dominated the freestyle events as sophomore Gustav Swedenborg 
jun or junior uh, Marcus Forsgren and junior Norm Gregory each won a free, a free event as well. With the 125 to 87 victory, LaSalle has now beaten Mount St. Mary's three years in a row by a combined score of 367 to 197. It was a big weekend for the women's swimming and diving team as they picked up their first victory of the year on the road against Mount St. Mary's. The women took hold gold in eight events throughout the course of the meet. The explorers truly worked as a team with the women dominating in the initial 400 medley relay. Individually, Fries men and freshmen, excuse me, and Moser earned double victories in both the 400 and 800 free. Fellow freshman Sarah Wyant also came out on top in the 200 free, while senior Olivia DeStefano powered through to win the 50 free. The men's tennis team started their spring season against A-10 foe Fordham, followed up by a match against Philly rival Drexel. Senior uh, Francesco Maury started the weekend strong, winning both his single, singles in a third set tiebreaker and earned a 7-5 victory in doubles competition with freshman Nassim Fangiro. However, Rogelio Gonzalez was the only other explorer to pick up a win, and LaSalle ultimately suffered a 5-2 defeat. There was a little deja vu at Drexel, as Maori had another spectacular performance, taking home another third set tiebreaker and a doubles point. Yet none of his teammates would follow the lead, follow his lead, dropping all their matches in a 6-1 loss. That's all we've got for recaps this week, but stick around, because when we come back, Bianca Brzezicki will give us all the scoop on the men's basketball team's upcoming Big Five matchup against St. Joe's. According to the Mayo Clinic, exercising has stress-busting benefits by bumping up your endorphins and improving your mood. What you reading, loser? Nothing, man. I'm just trying to study for this task coming up. You know, I have to keep up with work. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm trying to study, leave me alone. Hey man, leave him alone, he's trying to study. Alright man, you got it. There's plenty of LaSalle sports action this upcoming week, so let us welcome Bianca Brzezicki for this week's Explorers Report. Thanks, Tyler. On Tuesday, February 5th, men's basketball will be taking on the Big Five rival, St. Joe's at Tom Gola Arena at 7 p.m. This is the first time the two teams will play against each other this season. The Explorers have recently won their first home game and hope to keep the momentum going. Having the home court will definitely be an advantage for the Explorers as they take on their crosstown rivals. LaSalle will need Saul Ferry, Tracy Carter, Pookie Powell, and Isaiah Dees to take control of the ball and run the offense. The Explorers will also need Miles Brookins and David Beattie locked down on defense. Meanwhile, the Hawks are 9-12 with a 2-6 and six conference record. St. Joe's lost their last game to Dayton on the road by a score of 75-64. to 64. The Hawks are currently missing Anthony Longyear due to concussion. They also have Lamar Kimball and Pierce Francisco out due to injury. However, they still have Chris Clover and Charlie Brown Jr., who both led the team in scoring against Dayton. The Explorers will need to have strong defense against these players. Offense needs to stake in control for the win. For Sportsline, I'm Bianca Brzezicki. Thank you, Bianca. Um, I've got a lot of faith in the Explorers this week, actually. I mean, St. Joe's was supposed to be a pretty good team for the A-10 coming in, mm -hmm. um, but they've had a really rough year. Um, they've had quite a few players injured, yep. quite a few guys missing a lot of time, key mm -hmm. guys. Um, and they haven't shot very well from the floor. They haven't had a great offensive team nor a great defensive team. Um, so I think the Explorers may ride a little win streak here and 
come out ahead. Yeah, for the first time this season, we can really say that they are over 500 in the last couple of stretch, five of their last nine. So it are rolling. They have their first win at home, and St. Joe's is primarily a defensive team. Their leading scorer only has 20 points in Charlie Brown Jr. So <laughs> besides that, I mean, as long as we could shut him down with the injury bug catching them, they have a really short bench, so we'll have to ride them out. Yeah, so you mentioned um, LaSalle last night. They had a really big win mm -hmm. at home finally yep. against UMass. We mentioned them earlier on. Um, UMass is another team that struggled. We've beaten them twice this year, and we're not a great team. So mm -hmm. that doesn't tell you that tells you about where uh, UMass stands. Um, but last night, the La Salle uh, Co Coach Howard said this quite a bit in his press conference last night. We finally saw them play 40 minutes of hustle, mm -hmm. gritted out basketball. We didn't play well. No. We shot terribly. It was a scrappy win. You're right. Yeah. Right. They Ed Croswell had to fight for every rebound he got. He had 11 rebounds but he had to fight for every single one of them because mm -hmm. they had a big man who weighed 350 pounds or whatever he is. An he's, absolute unit, He's yeah. a massive big man. Um, and then... Uh, and even uh, you say that, Croswell, yeah. majority of his boards were on the offensive side, keeping possessions alive. Right. I mean, a key play that sticks out to me is Pookie Powell running into the corner, throwing it off a man's leg, keeping the ball on their side. Just little plays like that. Right, that's during really a stretch where them. we had five offensive rebounds on the same possession. Yeah. It's absolutely unbelievable the amount of hustle that they showed uh, last night. They were hungry for their first win and it showed on yeah, the court. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got some picks for you guys. Um, I'll start it off, I guess. Uh, I've, I am very big on the Explorers this week. I have us winning 71 to 66. I have the same differential. I have 72 to 67. And th they've just been in every single game. Whether it's a loss or win, it's always by a narrow margin. So I think it's going to be the same way this time. Absolutely. Um, Bianca is going to come back on. Let's see if she is just as optimistic. My prediction is the Explorers winning the game with a score of 78 to 70. So, yeah, I mean, we all have the Explorers coming through this week. Um, like we said, St. Joe's hasn't been great this year. Mm -hmm. LaSalle might have found a little stride and a little hustle and some heart to fight through and win games and finally close out a game. Right. Well, that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorer Report, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com or check out this week's edition of The Collegian. Also, check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV and on Twitter at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions there. For Isaiah, Bianca, and our Sportsline team, I'm Tegan Lamont. And I'm Tyler Small. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at the game.